Hi! Um, Sarah Fleming from Prepare to Die Paper Crafts here and I wanted to, uh, sorry I'm a little late, I'm, I normally do 12.30 on Mondays now, that's my regular time for my live Facebook videos, but um, I went down to put mm. on my makeup and I noticed that I did not, um, that I had gotten a stamp in a box, so I had to get that all in and get it upstairs. I only opened part of it. I didn't even open the big box. I just opened the little package. So, um, but I, I'm just checking here to make sure that I am live. I brought my computer up today in case I have the same issue as last time because that was painful. So, ah, it looks like I am live. Let me mute myself over here and I will, there we go. Okay. Looks like I'm live. Okay, I'm going to make sure we have sound. Yep, there's sound. Okay, cool. Well, um, hi. <laughs> um, okay, so last week I was playing with the baby wipe technique. And I, um, when I was done with it, I was looking at the baby wipe that was in the trash. And I thought it looked like it would make a really cool background. So I started playing around with it. And I made this background. And I thought... Wow, that's an amazing looking background. And I've Googled all over the place and I can't find that this is a thing. So it might be new and it might not. But for the time being, I'm calling it Baby Wipe Faux Batik Background because I don't know what else to call it. Because um, it's a little batiky because there's, even though there's no like wax resist, um, the baby wipes are huggies and they have little H's stamped all over them. And when you use the baby wipe for an ink pad, you end up um, with little little um, spaces in your color. So I'll show you what that looks like, what I'm talking about. See how you have little stamped H's here? That's just from using an e, a baby pack, a baby wipe as the ink pad. So I'm gonna do a paper baby technique before. I'm gonna show you how to do the baby wipe technique. And then I'm going to, um, after I do a quick, um, a quick uh, demo of that then I'm gonna show you how to make a card um, or make the background using the leftover baby wipe oh and here's a cat to join us okay so I'm gonna flip you around I think I'm ready for that already so we're gonna do that and get started real quick there's my video yarn did you notice I dressed up for you today Okay, but truth be told, um, I dressed up because I, um, <laughs> all my shirts are dirty, so it's like, guess I'm wearing a dress today. Oh, I see someone's on here, so, and I can't see who it is yet, but maybe my computer will show me in a minute, but hello, whoever it is. And, um, okay, so I'm going to show you uh, just real quickly how to do the baby wipe technique. Wait, I need this. You need a craft mat. Uh, this is just an old one that I had. I don't even have Stampin' Up's craft mat yet, but I should get it. But um, So you get a baby wipe. Alcohol free is better for doing paper crafts, unless you want to do like some kind of alcohol techniques. But I have a, um, a baby wipe and I've folded it in quarters. And then you need reinkers, and I'm gonna use four of them today. I have Bermuda Bay which is, well, you know, it might have replaced Island Indigo as my favorite uh, blue right now. So I'm just putting a few drops all over my baby wipe um, just to kind of give me lots of spots with color. And then I've got pumpkin pie because um, it's a nice bright orange, though my favorite orange tangerine tango and I'm just putting the orange right in next to the blue because it always looks nice right next to each other I love orange and blue together I'm sure there's some scientific reason um, I will give you a tip on this use the green whatever green you choose if you choose a green use it sparingly um, because your blues and yellows run together anyway and then if you have just little hints of a darker green in there then it works out nicely so I kind of fill in a lot of the spots with yellow this is daffodil delight and I 
I can't see who I've got on here, but I see I've got a couple people on the line. So hello. Thanks for joining me. I love comments. So if you have any questions or um, just anything to say, um, I will watch on the computer and try to get your comments. So I'm just putting a little bit of green in a few spots. I'm not going to use a lot of green. And actually, I'm trying to use just one drop of green everywhere that I'm using green. Put a little bit here in the corners. Okay, so there's your baby wipe. And you're actually going to use this baby wipe as an ink pad. So that's, this is, um, ah, my lid does not want to go back on. Hello, lid. That's never happened. Okay, there. Okay, so, um, okay, so I'm just going to show you. Oh, I forgot to get out my white card stuff. Okay. It's right here. Oh, that's the wrong color. It's the wrong color stuff. That's for later. We'll put this here because I'm going to need this. Um, so I'm just getting out some Whisper White. I just want to show you a few things that, you know, a few different, well, the how it comes out looking when you use the Baby Wipe as a stamp pad. Hey, Tony. Thanks for joining me. Um, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just, I have my acrylic block. Oh, you can't see that what I'm doing there. I should get in frame. And I'm just, uh, I just kind of rubbed it across. And then I'm going to do some direct to paper here. Just stamp that on. And that makes kind of a fun background. So that's one thing you can do with the baby wipe. And then you can also do the same thing, but kind of smush it around instead of just swiping it. So you get kind of some different effects there. So here you've got like kind of a more whatever. I don't even know what to call that. But anyway, so that's those are a couple of things. And, or you can stamp with it. Just ink up your stamp with the baby wipe. And then you have this beautiful multicolored stamped image. I'm going to do that a couple more times. Just to kind of show you the different looks you can get. So there's that. And I love this stamp. No one deserves a happier birthday than you. I am way out of frame today. So, and you know, after you've been doing it for a while, it to get a little bit muddy. So, um, and that's, uh, that's all right. But you see how you get just like these gorgeous stamped images. And so now, but now what we're going to do is use the leftover baby wipe. That's the main point of this whole video. Oh, sorry. I almost stepped on my cat. Um, we're going to use that to make backgrounds and I have, this is my last piece of shimmery white cardstock, but I did get a new, um, shipment today and I got new shimmery white cardstock in the mail today. So that'll be nice. Um, so, um, I'm going to use my shimmery white here and where'd my, I go? Okay. So this, I want to make sure, see when you open up the baby wipe, it's kind of splotchy, and the other side doesn't have a lot on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rub it back and forth with a bone folder. Um, try to use a bone folder that you don't mind staining. Like I have a new Stampin' Up! one, and I don't want to stain it. I kind of want to keep it white. So just use an old one or, you know, one that you have on hand. Or if you don't have one on hand, you can always... Just stain your bone folder. It's not a big deal. Um, okay, so, but I am going to clean that off so that it doesn't stain too much. And, okay, so now the ink should be spread through a lot better. See, now you've got color all over it, so it's really nice. Now, there, I'm going to show you two different things you can do with this. The first is um, you've got... I can't get the baby wipe apart, of course. Okay, so I'm just going to spread this all over my shimmery white cardstock. And the reason I'm using shimmery white is because that takes water really well. And if you um, if you were to do this on regular Whisper Right, you'd get a lot of bubbling and um, just it just it kind of ruin your paper a little more. But with the shimmery white or the thick Whisper White or the watercolor paper, you could do all of these techniques. So, um, so what I'm going to do is, since this baby wipe is still wet, I'm going to, on half of this, I'm just going to kind of
kind of rub my bone folder across it to show you kind of how the color will transfer for you. So I've just laid it on top of the paper and I'm running my bone folder across. And so you get this gorgeous background here. And what I would do is I would, and see I did get some bubbling, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt it and it kind of goes along with the look. And I maybe have more green than I want, um, but it'll still make a really fun background. And then, so then you can just cut this, um, cut it down to make backgrounds for your cards or whatever. But then let me show you the other way to do it. Once your baby wipe is dry, in fact, let me take my kind of drier one. This one I was using earlier. Um, once it's kind of dry, then just take um, a spritzer. And I, I have one spritzer that's water and one that's alcohol, so I have to make sure that I get the right one. So this is my water spritzer, and that's what I want. Oh, I sprayed it in the wrong spot. So you're just going to spritz this. Kind of all over and this is going to bubble your paper up some and on watercolor paper it's not going to uh, be as bad but like I said it, it, it kind of goes nice your background. Um, so we're just going to rub it across the end. And a different, that's what I love about this every single time. Oh look at that that's even better. Because see down here you've got all this concentrated color but then this way when we've sprayed it you just have this kind of Oh, I don't know. I love it. I'm so in love with this. Like I'm having to make myself not use it on every card now just because I am enjoying it so much. So um, I'll set that aside to dry and then I made one earlier and so I'm going to go ahead and use that one to finish off a card. And I'm going to, okay cat, I'm sorry, I'm going to roll over your tail if you don't move. All right. So, ow! She bit me. She is biting. <laughs> my cat is biting my feet. Oh, am I on your tail? I told you, if you didn't move, I was going to roll on you. Sorry, Minerva. Okay, so my cat just bit my feet quite a bit, and my ankles. Oh, brat. She's been with me for, well, 13 years now? Almost 13 years? Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, I made this one earlier using the same colors, and I'm just going to kind of pick a spot that I really like. Now, and I really love this kind of smeared section over here, but I also really like this, so I'm going to have to pick. I think I'm going to go with the smeared section. So I'm just going to cut it down, and I'm going to cut it as tall as my card. Um, well, let me cut the width first. So the width, let's go with like a three inch. I'm going to do three inches wide here, and then I'm going to save the rest of this for later. And then here, my card base will be five and a half inches tall. And I do want some of this white here at the end, so I'm going to go from, I'm going to cut off the other end. Because I think it's nice when you have kind of a decent amount of white showing. I think it just makes a nice background. And so this is going to be what, what goes on our card. And now I need my card base. So I've got a pumpkin pie card base here, and do we want it this way or this way? No, I want, I want the white showing down. Okay, so let me show you. Whenever you have, um, and this is mostly dry, and see you can use this little trimmed off piece later also. So um, what you're going to do, see when I am putting something down, normally you know, I'm in love with this stuff and that's what I would use but when I am um, when you wet paper it buckles and so and then when it dries it usually flattens out a little bit but it still likes to pull when you put it down on a card sorry I keep bumping the whatever Wow, I got it right into my demonstration today and I didn't even tell you all about like the stuff I have coming up. So I'll talk about that now while I'm... Anyway, I was going to tell you, I use tear and tape if I'm putting something that I've that I've wet. I use that to put it on the card. Because that just... Um, that kind of... 
make sure it stays down. Which, I mean, I trust the green glue with pretty much anything, so it would probably keep it down anyway, but uh, tear and tape. Um, I'm gonna, I also, tear and tape is my probably second favorite, you know, adhesive if you're not counting dimensionals. And this is, tear and tape is what I would use, like if you're um, making boxes and bags out of paper, I would definitely use the tear and tape to seal them because you, that's just going to be the best hold you get. Okay, so I've got that. Let me crease my base. Yeah, that lays down better. Okay, so I have that. Oh, here I was. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I accidentally turned it over and stuck it to my grid paper. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue where I have paper stuck to it now. Dummy. That sounds about right. Okay. So I want the white at the bottom. Let me make sure my card's opening that way. Okay. So I'm just going to put this here. And then I... Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not using the green glue. So... Okay, when you use the tear and tape, make sure it's exactly where you want it before you put it down, because then you can't move it. With the green glue, you have a few seconds to move it around, make sure it's perfectly straight. So I was just trimming off a little bit that was hanging over the edge. Look how pretty! I love it. Oh, okay. So now, oh yeah, I meant to show you all this. So I, I did this technique the other day, and I used... Um, Melon Mambo, Peekaboo Peach, Daffodil Delight, and Cucumber Crush. And I ended up making, like, with the baby wipe uh, as the stamp pad, using the baby wipe technique, I made all these really pretty little stamps. Um, I haven't done anything with them yet. I can't believe I haven't because I really like them. But I'll do something with them. And then I used the background from that session uh, to make this card. So we're actually kind of just casing this card today. So, um... But yeah, look how that came out with the Melon Mambo and the and all the white. And then you've got some smeary areas in here. That's just, it comes out different every time. And I just, I just think it's gorgeous. Um, I hope you think it's gorgeous too because um, <laughs> I hope y'all aren't sitting out there going, um, Sarah, that's really ugly. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp a sentiment. And I'm using this, um, I'm doing the same card, basically, as the one I just showed you. So I'm going to stamp the, I'm just going to cut off mm, enough so that I can stamp this. Because you can't run it through the big shot as a whole sheet of paper, so you always have to cut it. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the thanks kindly. What color should we do that in? Maybe Bermuda Bay? Uh, yeah, with the white. Okay, we're going to do Bermuda Bay. Poor Island Indigo. I It's been my favorite ever since I joined Stampin' Up! But Bermuda Bay has just kind of taken over for me lately. Um, but I'll get back to it. Oh, I smeared that. I was not being, I wasn't being careful. Okay. So I love this stamp. This is, um, thanks kindly. This is from my very favorite thank you stamp set. This is the One Big Meaning stamp set. And it's got so many fun um, thank you stamps. Um, all right, so stamped that. Close that up. And then I need my stitched framelit. Put that on there. And I'm going to run this through. I'm not even going to pull the big shot over. I'm just going to crank it through. Ooh. Try not to shake everything too much. All right. Okay. So pretty. Okay. And then I've got um, this little dragonfly. I want to make sure I'm using colors that are in my... So oh! Dog. All right, I'm gonna stamp the dragonfly in yellow. I don't care if there are really yellow dragonflies or not. When I'm making a card, I, I am not concerned about whether things are the right color. 
um, just like I do um, a cardinal at Christmas time. I've done it in blue, and I don't care. Okay, so this is this um, dragonfly is from the Awesomely Artistic set. It's not from the new dragonfly set. So I stamped it off once because I want a really pale dragonfly on my little sentiment. And then um, here's my what color I want to do that in. I'll do that one in maybe the pumpkin pie. Ooh, I hope that was not a shot up my dress because my dress was pulled way up. All right, I'm going to stamp off the pumpkin pie maybe twice because it's a really bright orange. And I'm going to do it again over here just to give a little texture to our sentiment and then put some dimensionals on here. I have them out, but I have put them somewhere. I have, um, if you have a craft room and you don't have these wonderful carts from Ikea, you need to get some. They're the best. I've got, I have three in here, and two are set up for me to use. I should have cut these in half, but I want to make y'all watch me cut dimensional. Um, I have... I have two of these Raskog carts, or Raskog, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Swedish. Um, I just know how I would read it if it were in English. Um, so I have two of these Raskog carts set up for me. And then I have a third one that I don't have set up for me yet, but I will. Anyway, I've got one on either side of my desk, and it is, um, I'm just making sure I got kindly straight on the card. Oh, so cute. Okay, now, when you have a background this busy that's got so much saturation in it, you really don't need a lot to finish off your card. Just stick some rhinestones on. Um, and what I do when I put on rhinestones, because I love a spray of rhinestones that kind of goes up and down the card, what I do is I just kind of start setting them out. I'll take a big one here. And... No, nope, I don't like that. And I don't mash them down until I'm sure I know where they want to go. Or, or until I'm sure I know where I want them to go. I'll put the big one maybe here. And I think I want one more way up top. A little one. My problem with rhinestones is I forget to use the biggest size. And I use so many of these. And I even use these because you can, these are strips. Um, that you can set out in a line or curve in a circle, but you can also cut them so that you can use them one at a time, and they're the same as the tiny ones. That's what I usually end up doing. Um, yeah, I like that. Okay, so I don't push them down and kind of activate that adhesive until I'm sure I know where I want them to go. So, oh, what do you think? You like? I like. Um, okay, so... So that's our card today. Let me show you a few things that I forgot to show you. Oh yeah, so when I made my background for the dragonfly card the other day, I went ahead and also cut, it, cut out the baby dragonflies out of the same background. So that's going to make a big statement on a really colorful card. So I really like that. And then, oh, I got some thumbs up and some hearts. Thank you. I like those. And what else did I do? Oh, yeah, so these are just different backgrounds I made uh, using this technique. Um, that's from that same one with the Melon Mambo. So, um, love that one. So you, you do one sheet of the Shimmery White cardstock, and you end up with, like, a ton of different um, backgrounds for your cards. So, even just doing this one time is going to get you a lot. Oh, here's the baby wipe technique. Um, I did blues and grays. Well, I did blues with Smoky Slate and did this on the jellyfish. I um, can't remember the name of that stamp set. What is that? Uh, from Land to Sea. So, I did the, uh, the jellyfish with that. I liked how that came out. And... Okay, that's all I have on that side. What did I have on the... Oh, I just got this in today. Oh, sorry. I keep hitting that. Just got this in today. This is a stamp set. Actually, 
I'm going to show you what this does really quickly if you'd like to see because this is really cool. This is something I hadn't seen before. So it's a stamp set and it's got these embossing folders that come with it that they deboss and then you stamp over the debossed image. Let me show you what you get. It's really cool. Where's that piece of paper I just cut off? Okay, so I'm going to just um I'm going to just stick this in here and I'm going to run it through my Big Shot because the Big Shot cuts and embosses and you just take out this part, the, big shot, the thin diameter, and that's how you emboss with it. So you use the same sandwich, you stick the folder in the paper and stick the, oh wait, I have to cut that down because it won't go through the Big Shot that, that way. Okay. So we'll put it through the big shot like this. So this is going to deboss this image, right? This is so cool. I haven't even played with this. This is fresh out of the package. Okay, so you have really cool debossed image here. And then you take the stamps that come in it. First of all, you can stamp celebrate, right? Oh, where it is, and then deboss it, and then it's, I'm going to use this really big sloppy one. When you get this, um, when you get this little thin piece of film, that's supposed to go in the trash, so you don't need to worry about trying to reattach that every time when that comes off of your stance. So I'm going to use this, stick it right on here. Let me... I haven't even done this yet. I'm really excited. Oh dimensional backings. They're on everything. I found one on my boob one time. I went to nurse a baby and there was a dimensional backing on my boob. Um, okay, so you stamp right over top of the words. Ah, oh my goodness, that's so cool. Look at that. Look at that. It's, it comes out. Ah. Anyway, okay, I'm very excited about that. Okay, I know what I'm playing with this afternoon, because when the kids get back, it'll be quiet time, and I get a little more time to play. Um, right. I wanted to see if there was anything else. This is an awesomely artistic um, that I was using earlier. So, Anyway, this thing um, that I just showed you also comes with a happy debossing folder, and then it comes with, I don't know, all these different shapes, all these... Um, Shapes. And then some really good sentiments too. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So you'll get a lot of good geometric patterns out of that. Man, I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm probably going to stamp that again right there. Oh, but that's fun. Okay, a uh, couple last things. I'm, I'm going to turn you around and put back on the uh, the other one. Maybe. Okay. Let's see. I can get you up here without dropping you. Yes, I can. Okay. So, um, the last things. Um, one, if you're local, my card buffet is on the 25th. Yes, the 25th is a Saturday. My card buffet is on the 25th. It's all thank yous and birthdays. So, um, and it's two fifty per card. And then when you get over 10 cards, it's $2 per card. So, um, if you want to sign up for that, make sure you RSVP. You can email me at slimmingstampinup at, at gmail.com or you can call or text me if you have my phone number or you can comment on my Facebook page or on a blog post. Just, um, I'll get it. And then the other thing, if you're not local, then I'm doing a stamp a stack by mail and it uses this, um, this one that's, um, what's it called? Big on birthdays. And so you'll make two of these, two of these, two of these masculine ones, and two of these. And you get, um, you get all the supplies to make eight cards. You get the stamp set, and, um, and then you get the tutorials. So then if you re want to recreate the cards, you'll have all the stuff. And you'll have all the measurements and everything you need to recreate the cards. So that'll be, um, so that's what, um, that's what you get there. Um. I can't remember how much it is. I want to say it's $51 and include it includes over no $50 plus $7 shipping and it includes over 
$30 in product. And then you get the stuff to make the eight cards, you get the tutorials, and there will be a video. So just um, make sure you sign up for that. I think the cutoff date is February 22nd. And the cutoff date to sign up for my card buffet might be the 22nd, it might be the 21st, I can't remember. But I think that's all I have today. I'm really excited, I'm gonna play with those debossing folders and see what I get out of that, because that's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm really excited. That's it's even better than I thought it was gonna be. So, um, so that's what I'm about to start playing with. Well, thanks for joining me today. I'll be back here again next Monday at 12.30. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'll, I'm sure something will come up. But I might, I might be doing something with this thing because I'm really, really excited about it. So, I love stamping. Um, okay, so um, I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me. Uh, finish. Uh oh, it won't let me hit.